everybody welcome to my channel my name is Louisa do you want to learn how to use one of those beautiful jumbo rose beads do you want to learn how to make that necklace it requires a little bit of jewelry engineering now that's not a term that I acquired through going to college or anything like that okay it's just a loose term that I use when I'm trying to figure out how to make a jewelry piece a little bit more wearable I have another uh, one of those beautiful rose beads on as you can see this is a little bit smaller because I'm not my frame is small so I can't wear those big ones but look how lovely this looks. And through the magic of videography, let me show you a different version. Voila, how do you like this one? This is the larger version, as you can see, it's a little bit too big for my frame, but that doesn't mean that you can't wear one uh, like this. So anyway, guys, we're gonna learn how to make the necklace that you saw at the beginning of the video. But before we do, I wanna go into the history of some of the struggles that I've uh, gone through with rose beads. Now, if you don't wanna watch that, I'm gonna leave the timestamp down below so you can skip to the tutorial. And, uh, and I'll also leave a description of all the materials that I used. All right, so let's get busy. Okay, so my obsession with rose beads began uh, probably, I would say, in the early spring of this year when I received this gorgeous um, bead mix from Jesse James. Um, and I had these lovely rose beads in that mix and uh, I made this necklace. And it was a bit of a struggle because the beads swiveled on the wire and um, I didn't want that to happen because there's nothing worse than having a necklace that you have to fiddle with. So what I did is I did a little bit of a wire work in the back to prevent them from swiveling and that seemed to work pretty well. So then after I made that necklace, I went looking for uh, rose beads. I found these other rose beads that weren't exactly the same. Um, these were actually, uh, they were cabochons. So they were not drilled, so I had to figure out how to build a necklace using rose beads or cabochon beads. Um, and of course I used the, uh, the little bezel, the trays. And so this is the way this one turned out. So here's another one that I made not too long ago. And uh, you know, if you hang them vertically, it's okay because then you don't have gravity fighting you. So this one's on a, on a blank, uh, but it's hung vertically. So the loops are opposite each other, but they hung ver vertically. And so this one seems to work better and um, you know, it's not too fussy. Here's another attempt. If you haven't seen the tutorial for this necklace, I'll uh, go ahead and leave a link down below. But the other option, of course, is to put the cabochon on some kind of component. And um, as long as the cabochon is flat in the back, you can uh, actually glue it on and uh, be confident enough that it's not going to fall off. But if the bead is rounded in the back, then you can't do that. It's a little bit more challenging. So here's the pretty necklace that I wore when I opened uh, the video. Um, this is one of Michelle's roses. And um, so this rose, I had two of them in the package that she gave me. This one uh, is actually rounded in the back, okay, and it's drilled all the way through. So um, I could not, I, I didn't feel confident just gluing it on something because the surface isn't flat. So what I did with this one, this, this is actually one of the easier um, problems to solve. What I did with it is I wired it directly onto this filigree component, okay, and then uh, there was room on the sides there to do some wraps. Let me bring it up closer. Okay, so uh, each side has about four or five wraps. And that worked out because it makes the, the bead very secure. It acts like a little cushion in there. So it holds the, pe uh, the bead uh, nicely in place. So this one was actually very easy to work with. Um, I didn't have to struggle with this one too much because then I just added some uh, tassels and the strands. And the strands, that's another reason I liked using the uh, filigree component um, because then I can actually place the strands higher up on the bead instead of on the side, okay? Uh, it just um, sits better and it works better with gravity if the, the strands are coming off the top of the bead instead of the sides, if that makes any sense. And here's the other one. This is that very, very large uh, bead and this one is rounded in the back, okay? Um, but this one was a little bit more challenging this, than the smaller one because um, of the size, okay? So the, the holes sit higher up on the pedal and if you put that against a flat surface, um, it's not gonna work out. You, you can't wire it very well without seeing a whole bunch of wire or a whole bunch of wraps. So that's the reason why I just uh, went ahead and put it on some jump rings and built these components. Okay, and it's it's okay. I mean, I, I don't know if I'll keep the swag. 
I may take the swag uh, off. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Um, it's not too bad, you know, as far as the, the weight of it, the weight distribution. I mean, it does tip a little bit from time to time and you do have to fiddle with it a little bit when you put it on, but once it's on your chest, it's okay. It doesn't move around too much, okay? But this one, I would say, was probably one of the most challenging of all the beads. A rose is a rose is a rose. Well, no, it isn't. Um, each one is different, believe it or not. You know, these are the easiest ones to work with, obviously. And if you like uh, dainty jewelry, obviously, you're going to go with something like this and perhaps use a little uh, tray to put it in, uh, if that's your taste. Uh, but today we're going to go ahead and tackle one of these large ones. And I think I'm going to tackle this one. Okay, this one has the holes on the petals. So if you have a very large bead like this one with the holes on the petals, uh, this is the tutorial for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and gather our materials and we'll get started. All right, so one of the most important things you're going to need today is wire. You're going to need 20 gauge, 22 gauge, and 26 gauge. Now, uh, I'm not really particular about the brands. Um, I do like to use non-tarnishing wire whenever possible. And I am going to use this uh, German style Beadalon 20 gauge wire medium temper for the large bead. Uh, I'm going to build a um, structure that's going to hold the bead in place and it's going to prevent it from tipping. So this tends to be a little bit stronger than other wires I've noticed. So anyway, these are the wires you're going to need. You're also going to need a selection of beads and um, you know just pick something that uh, matches your your um, rose bead. I'm using this yellowish creamy colored rose bead so I thought uh, these beads would look really nice with it. Uh, I've got clear glass, I have this pearly uh, finish and I've got this pale uh, fire polished bead over here. This is six. This is a six millimeter, a four millimeter. These are some teardrop uh, shaped beads that I have and I think these are like five by seven millimeters in um, dimension. And uh, these are the pearl nuggets. Um, I think they're four by 5.5 millimeters in dimension. Uh, but anyway, don't get too hung up on beads uh, because I'm just doing this tutorial to show you how to use this bead. And that's what the main focus of this uh, lesson is about, okay? It's not about what kind of beads you're gonna use. So this is completely up to you, but this is what I'm gonna be using today. You're gonna need some jump rings and um, I like to use four millimeters for this project. Uh, you will also need one larger jump ring for the lobster claw clasp and I usually use either a 5 or a 6 millimeter for that. And you're going to need a, a bunch of tools, um, definitely some chain nose pliers, flat nose pl pliers, round nose pliers, flush cutters. Uh, you, you're going to need some uh, nylon coated pliers to straighten your wire out if you need to. And then this is probably the most important tool today. These are bale making pliers and I'm going to be using the large uh, bale. And I believe it makes six millimeter loops. Um, but anyway, this is what you're going to need to build the component that's going to go around the large bead. So this is probably the most important tool. And last but not least, you're going to need some chain and a lobster claw clasp. I've already attached this one to the chain. The chain is not dainty chain, but it's not very large either. Um, I would not recommend using dainty chain with a large bead such as this one because it just it's not going to be strong enough okay this weighs quite a bit I would recommend a chain that has lengths that are uh, no less than two by three or three by five um, probably three by five would be better I think with this kind of uh, bead uh, but nothing dainty. I'm going to start by cutting a piece of wire that's between 12 and 16 inches. I always recommend cutting a little bit longer than you uh, normally would use just to be on the safe side. All right, so here's my wire and, and before I start I want to give credit to Sarah Ellis from Jesse James because I learned this technique that I'm about to show you from Sarah. I think it was Sarah. Um, I tried to go back through my memory banks to find, figure out who it was that I saw do this technique. Uh, but I think it was Sarah Ellis from Jesse James. Okay. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get your bail making pliers and you're going to place the barrel in the middle of the wire. And you can just eyeball it, you don't have to measure it, okay, just place it right in the middle, just like this. And then using your thumb, you're going to bend that wire around that bail, just like this. Okay, you'll need to open up the uh, pliers in order to continue to bend that wire around that, that bottom barrel. So what I do is I 
bend the wire a little bit okay the best way I can around that barrel just like this okay and then I take it out and I insert it back in and I do the other side okay this is how I do this type of uh, coil you may have seen people doing it uh, different ways but this is the way I do it and I just keep switching from one side to the other okay that way I'm not going to end up with one side longer than the other if that makes any sense so just keep doing this okay take it off the barrel and then switch and continue to wrap that wire around that barrel you're going to need between seven and nine wraps it just all depends on how big your rose is okay um, these wraps are going to be used to hang uh, a tassel from them so you're going to be hanging different beaded strands from each of these wraps each of these loops so the more loops you have the more uh, tassels you're going to be uh, able to hang so it's going to be up to you um, it's always nice to have a whole bunch you know along the bottom of this rose just to make it more interesting okay so I'm recommending that you do at least nine all right so that's what you want with the wires uh, coming out from the same side okay then you're going to get your nylon coated pliers and you're going to turn the work at an angle and squish down just like this you want to lay down those loops okay at an angle just like that and I always uh, flip my work around when I'm doing this just to make sure that I'm spreading the loops evenly okay it's a little bit tricky at first but you want to lay them down just like that okay and the idea is to separate the loops so this is where it's a little bit different from Sarah's technique okay she actually used this in a design I think it was a pair of earrings but I'm going to use this to get my loops um, and the reason I do it like this is it's just so much easier to form loops like this in my opinion you know because it, I think they're more evenly spaced out when you do it like this so just keep working at them keep separating them until you get them all spaced out nice and evenly flatten them out and this actually work hardens the wire as well and then once you have them separated get your bead and place it against your bead to see how it fits okay now you may have to continue to separate them some more but the nice thing about this is that you can actually uh, adjust it even further after you've already uh, mounted it onto the bead okay so I'm going to keep separating them just a little bit more because um, these loops do not have to be large because these are the loops that are going to hold the tassels okay so it's okay if they get smaller so that looks pretty good to me and um, like I said before you know we can adjust it even further after it's been mounted onto the bead okay. Now you do have a choice if you want to work harden it some more by getting yourself a block and a mallet and tapping on it just a little bit to harden it a little bit and I think I'm going to do that just to make sure that um, I give it as much strength as I can but you don't have to do this next step it's completely up to you it's optional. Alright so there's my block and here's my mallet and I'm not going to do too much. All right, so now we're going to get some pliers and we're going to bend these uh, wires so that they're facing forward okay so that's one side that's the other side and at this point you might want to straighten your wire out so it can go through the holes pretty easily okay and we're going to thread it through just like this okay there it is and you can adjust it 
after you've threaded it through so that the loops are a little bit lower but you don't want them too low okay because you don't want them showing from the side of the bead you want them kind of hidden in the back all right so just push them down with your thumbs a little bit just like that okay we're not done yet these can actually be pushed further into the bead later on once we hang the um, tassels okay but I'm not going to do it yet because I want a little bit of space under there so after you've done that go to one end and bend the wire so that it's shooting out from the side of the bead just like this and I like to come in here with some pliers to make sure that it's bent okay and then do the same thing on this side so this is what you should have all right now we're going to form two loops so you're going to kink the wire just like that get your round nose pliers grab the loop wrap the wire around the barrel of your pliers just like this so you have a loop okay grab that loop with a set of pliers and I always use crimping uh, pliers guys I know I've done this before in previous videos I love these for grabbing loops and obviously I don't use the grooves I use the very tip where it's flat it just really holds that loop very well I just I love the way it holds that loop and you're gonna wrap it around just like you're doing a wrap loop now this is 20 gauge wire so it's pretty tough so I would recommend that you use pliers when doing this okay straighten your wire out if you need to get the kinks out and then you're going to go to the back and you're going to take the wire thread it through the back now this part is a little tricky guys okay because what you're going to have to do now is you're going to have to hold on to this little loop here you don't want to lose that loop and then pull that wire through without losing that loop okay that's the challenge with this one you want to keep that loop right in place you don't want to lose it because we're going to hang a, a little uh, dangle from there all right so you might have to use some pliers just like this to hold that loop in place and then pull this wire use your pliers to get it up and over okay and then to tighten it as well okay and I'm going to go ahead and snip the excess right there and tuck this little piece behind there okay so there's no sharp end sticking out all right I'm going to do this side now off camera and I'll be right back so once you have that what you need to do now is to straighten out these side loops okay now here's what I have noticed with these beads because they're so heavy the best thing to do is to angle them upward a little bit so you can hang your uh, strands this way okay same thing with this one okay this is what you want something like this and you can always adjust this later on now that the difficult part is over now we get to have fun so now we're going to build the strands okay to do that we're going to use the 22 gauge wire you don't want to use anything anything thicker than that because of these pearl beads uh, okay pearl beads have uh, tiny holes usually so 22 gauge is the thickest that I would recommend cut yourself a piece that's about three and a half to four inches something like that and then we're going to do a loop at one end okay so grab it like this kink it flip your plier around wrap the short end around that top nose of the plier flip your pliers again continue to wrap around to the back so you have this okay and then grab that loop with a pair of pliers and with a second pair you're going to grab the end <clears throat> excuse me and do a couple of wraps and I don't do 
a lot of wraps. I don't like doing a lot because I only, usually I only do two to three. I don't like a lot of wraps on my jewelry. And then snip off the excess. And then always tuck in whatever sharp end is sticking out, okay? And that's very important. So that's the first loop, okay? And now we're gonna thread on a pearl bead like this, a teardrop bead, okay? And you want the skinny end of the bead facing the pearl bead, just like that. And then a six millimeter round, another teardrop, and another pearl bead. Okay, very simple. And now we're gonna do another loop at this end. Okay, just like you did before. And snip off the excess and tuck it in. Okay, and then you should line up your loops so that they're both facing the same direction, okay? And that's as simple as that, okay? So we're gonna need 12 of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an additional 11 off camera and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back and I have my 12 components built and I've got my chain ready and my jump rings. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a jump ring and we're gonna open it up, okay? And then you're gonna hook it onto the bead, the rose bead, just like this, and then hook on two of these components, just like that, okay? Once you have those hooked on, go ahead and close your jump ring. Check it, make sure it's completely closed. And this is what you should have, okay? And you're gonna grab another jump ring And these are tiny jump rings, so it's going to be a little bit tricky. Hook it onto the two ends of these components, just like this, okay? Take the component, hook it onto one end of the jump ring, grab the jump ring, Get another one, hook it onto the other end, like this, and then close up your jump ring. And this is what you should have. Okay? Once you've got the uh, components hooked up, you can bend them a little bit and adjust them if you need to. Now we're gonna take a look at the loops and make sure they're lined up properly before we attach the next set. So once again, you want to get a jump ring and then open it up. Hook it on. Okay. Take the component. Hook it onto one end of the jump ring. Grab the jump ring. get another one, hook it onto the other end like this and then close up your jump ring. Okay, so now we have this set connected. Okay, put it down and now we're going to connect the chain because we only need three sets. Okay, so once again you want to get a jump ring and then open it up hook it onto the ends of these components like this, get your chain, okay, and close it up. So now I have this, okay, very pretty. So I'm going to do the other side and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back and I attached all the components and the chain and the clasp, as you can see. And you could stop here if you wanted to, but we're not gonna stop here. We're gonna keep going and we're gonna embellish it some more. 
and as you can see it hangs pretty nicely um, it doesn't flip too much and I'm really loving how it's looking so far I think it's very very pretty so now we're going to do a little fringe on the bottom and for that you will need the very thin wire and I'm going to use 26 gauge you're going to need your pearl beads your tiny pearl beads and your four millimeter crystals okay I almost forgot you will need some teardrop uh, beads again okay these are going to go on the end of each strand and for this what I normally do when I do my fringes or my, my um, beaded uh, strands I usually cut myself a piece of wire that's about maybe 10 inches something like that not too long okay what I normally do is I make my own head pin and I've done this before in previous videos and I'm sure you've seen other creators using uh, the same technique but you grab the wire with your um, round nose pliers right at the very end and you start uh, rolling it on the very tip of your plier okay so you just keep rolling it and you're going to do between two and three wraps right on the tip okay not not more than three just uh, some, somewhere between two and three two and a half something like that then you're going to bend the wire so it's shooting this way away from your pliers okay grab the end and thread it back through the coils that you just formed just like this grab it okay and you will need a set of uh, nylon coated pliers for this okay it's important because what, you, what you're going to do now is you're going to push that um, little uh, floret that you just made you're going to push it all the way down and you're going to tighten it so the more you push it down the tighter it gets okay and this is what you end up with okay very very pretty so now that you have your floret you're going to thread on a teardrop bead just like that okay leave the wire long for now all right I find this is a, a very efficient way of doing um, beaded strands because you don't waste so much wire um, but put your plies at the very top of that bead and give it a kink okay and now go ahead and switch your plies around and wrap it around and to the back just like that okay and at this point you can snip off the excess wire grab the loop with your pliers grab the other end and do a couple of wraps and then snip off the excess tuck in the uh, sharp end okay and that's what you end up with okay that's the bottom of the strand so now we're going to take that piece of wire that we just cut that long piece the leftover piece and we're going to form another loop at the other end but we're not going to close it just yet okay we're going to keep it open because now we're going to attach it to the speed just like this okay grab it with uh, a set of pliers grab the loop with a set of pliers and do a couple of wraps with another set of pliers snip off the excess tuck it in okay now the next bead we're going to thread is the pearl bead okay do another loop and you can actually if you wanted to snip it off at this point just so that it's easier to work with and then do your loop just like you did before a couple of wraps snip off the excess tuck it in and now you have this okay so the next bead is going to be a four millimeter crystal 
So once again, form a loop. Don't close the loop, keep it open so you can attach it to the strand. Just like this, okay? I know it's difficult to see because the wire is so thin, but hopefully you can see it on camera. Do your couple of wraps. And if you're brand new to this, you may find this technique a little bit challenging. I know I did initially, but I promise you it gets easier the more you do it, okay? And then snip off the excess, just like before, tuck it in. Okay, so now we have this. Thread your four millimeter crystal and do your um, loop at the other end. And you can make these strands as long as you want, okay? Personal preference. Rip off the excess, tuck it in. So now we have this, okay? So the next bead is gonna be a pearl bead. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see the pattern. We've got the teardrop at the bottom but that's a crystal, clear crystal, then comes the pearl, then comes a four millimeter crystal, and now comes the pearl. And I don't know if I'll add another bead after that. I'll have to wait and see. It's a good idea to, um, before you add your final bead, to just take a look and see how, how it looks on the necklace, because sometimes, you know, you can visualize something, but until you do it, you're not gonna really know how it looks. And I'm just um, trying to speed through this so that the video doesn't end up being too long. Okay, so the pearl bead goes on. And I'm gonna finish it off with a loop. What you wanna do now is you wanna just put it on there up against the uh, component, uh, the pendant, just to see you know how long you want it. It's all personal preference, and I think that's a good length for me. I don't think I want it any longer than that. Um, don't attach it yet, uh, because you're gonna do however many loops you have, that's how many strands you're gonna do, okay? And I think I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight, I have an even number, which is fine. So these two are gonna be my longest strands, okay? This is the longest strand. So the next one that I'm going to do is going to have a teardrop at the bottom. They're all going to have teardrops, a um, pearl bead, and a crystal. Okay, that's what I'm going to do for this one. Then for the next one, I'm going to have a teardrop and a pearl bead. Okay, and then I'm going to have for the final um, strand it's just going to be a teardrop okay so as you can see it's a definite pattern it's uh, clear pearl clear pearl but with the bottom one being a teardrop all right so i'm going to have three like this on this side and three like this on the other side now because i have an even number of loops i have eight loops i'm going to have to have a pattern that looks like this so I'm gonna to have to have two long strands in the center and then the other shorter ones on either side. Okay, so you need to take that into account. Uh, so let me show you what it would look like if you had an uh, odd number. Say you, said, say you had um, seven loops instead of eight. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you have uh, seven loops. So that's important. You need to figure out uh, how many strands you're gonna have and then how you are going to arrange the beads, okay? because um, you want you want a nice pattern that allows you to uh, graduate in um, number of beads okay ending with a one teardrop 
so that that's important to know and you, you're gonna have to figure it out so if you have nine loops obviously your center strand is gonna have to be a little bit longer or your beads are gonna be uh, you're gonna have to use smaller beads so that you don't don't end up with a fringe that's too long okay so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the rest of my strands off camera and I'll meet you back okay I'm back and I have all my strands built and I'm ready to connect them to the pendant and this is the easiest step of all the steps you're gonna get a jump ring okay very simply open it up take a long strand I always start with the center strands first and then hook it onto your jump ring and then very simply connect it onto one of the loops of your pendant just like this okay and then of course you're gonna close up that jump ring really really well okay and we have our first strand very easy all right so you're going to do all the other strands the same way I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera and I'll meet you back okay I'm back and here's the beautiful necklace I love how it looks I love the fringe it's adorable can you imagine this on a bride it's absolutely gorgeous I hope you've enjoyed today's video I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on and I'll come back and say goodbye tell me that doesn't look adorable I love this necklace even though the rose bead is a little bit too large for me maybe someday we can shamelessly wear large pieces again I know the dainty trend is still in uh, but I still love these kinds of necklaces anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye